Good evening. Welcome to Reading Night. Remember, the theme for tonight is a recipe for a good reader. Now, if you're a good reader, you are thinking about lots of things when you're reading. You're even asking questions. I want you to think about the setting. It is important to know the setting of a story so you know where and when it takes place, and it helps you understand what's going on throughout the story in the beginning, in the middle, and the end. Sometimes settings change, and sometimes it seems like settings change, but they really don't. That's what happens in this story, the day Jimmy Bo Jimmy's boa ate the wash. Be very careful as I read this book, as you pay attention to the setting, okay? I want you to think about, does the setting really change? Okay, pay attention to the characters that are speaking in the story and the illustrations. I'll point some things out to you. The Day Jimmy's Boa Ate the Wash by Trinka Hanks Noble, pictures by Stephen Kellogg. The Day Jimmy's Boa Ate the Wash. How was your class field trip to the farm? Oh, boring, kind of dull, until the cow started crying. If you'll notice, a little girl comes home from school and her mom asks her about her field trip. This is where the story takes place, after school at this little girl's home. That's the setting. Let's see what happens, see if it changes or stays the same. A cow crying? Yeah, you see, a haystack fell on her. But haystacks don't just fall over. You'll notice it's the girl and her mom at the house and they're having speech bubbles and thought bubbles. It does if the farmer crashes into it with his tractor. Oh, come on. A farmer wouldn't do that. He would if he were too busy yelling at the pigs to get off our school bus. See the little girl's thinking and there's her bubble. They're still at home talking about the field trip. What were the pigs? doing on the bus, eating our lunches. Why were they eating your lunches? Because we threw their corn at each other and they didn't have anything else to eat. Well, that makes sense. But why were you throwing corn? Because we ran out of eggs. Out of eggs? Why were you throwing eggs? Hmm. Mom is asking a lot of questions and the daughter is telling her what happened at that field trip. Because of the boa, because of the boa constrictor. The boa constrictor? Yeah, Jimmy's pet boa constrictor. What was Jimmy's pet boa constrictor doing on the farm? Oh, he brought it to meet the farm animals, but the chickens didn't like it. No, chickens don't like snakes. You mean he took it into the hen house? Do you notice mom's asking a lot of questions? Hmm? And the daughter's answering? Is the setting at the farm? Or is this just the story the little girl's telling? Yeah, the chickens started squawking and flying around. 
go on, go on. What happened? Well, one hen got excited and laid an egg and it landed on Jenny's head. The hen? No, the egg. And it broke yucky all over her hair. What did she do? She got mad because she thought Tommy threw it at her. So she threw one at him. What did Tommy do? Oh, he decided the egg. He decided, oh, he ducked and the egg hit Mary Ann in the face. Ow. I hope you guys don't act like that on a field trip. So she threw one egg at Jenny and missed, and it hit Jimmy, who dropped his boa constrictor. Oh, I know. And I know the next thing you know, everyone was throwing eggs, right? Right. You notice mom's still asking some questions. She's trying to figure out what happened. And the daughter's still telling about this crazy field trip. So did, is the setting the field trip or is the setting still at home with the mom and daughter talking and thinking about this, making these images in their brain? And when you ran out of eggs, you started throwing the pig's corn, right? Right again. Well, what finally stopped it? Well, we heard the farmer's wife screaming. Why was she screaming? I never found out because Mrs. Stanley made us get on the bus and we sort of left in a hurry without the boa constrictor. I'm sorry, that's my dog. I bet Jimmy was sad because he left his boa constrictor. Oh, not really. We left in such a hurry that one of the pigs didn't get off the bus. So now he's got a pet pig. Do you notice that the pictures changed a little bit again? They're showing the girl back at her house. She was there the whole time talking to mom, telling the story, and they were thinking in their brains and making pictures of what the girl was saying. Boy, that sure sounds like an exciting field trip, says mom. Yeah, I suppose if you're the kind of kid who likes a class trip to the farm. Look at these illustrations. So you're not here with me to ask questions and answer questions, but I hope you noticed that the setting for this story was not the farm. The setting for this story was at the little girl's house with her mom after school. Oh, look at him. Okay. The story takes place at the little girl's house after school with her and her mom. So the setting is the little girl's house after school. I know a lot of the pictures in the story show the farm during the field trip, but it's the conversation that happens of the mom asking questions. What's going on at that field trip and the daughter telling her. So remember a recipe for a good reader is to think about the setting the whole time you're reading or listening to a story and paying attention to the illustrations. Where and when a story takes place is the setting. This is a great book. I hope you enjoy it. If you ever see it in the library or anywhere else, go ahead, pick it up. Give it a look yourself. Bye, enjoy reading night. Bye-bye.